So believe it or not, I'm not actually that into pedals. I've never really been a pedal player live. I've always been more sort of based around presets and modeling or like rack gear and MIDI switching and that kind of thing. But doing the YouTube thing, I think that it's expected that you have certain pedals, certain industry standard kind of pedals. So I put together this board pretty much just for YouTube demos. So today I wanna to show you that pedal board and talk you through some of the pedals and the thinking and reasoning behind some of them. I also have a few questions for you. And I know it's really cramped in here today. I've got cameras in my face and lights everywhere, but this is actually a much smaller space than you probably realize. So to start with, this is the Novo 32 by Pedal Train. It's huge, it's heavy, it weighs a ton, comes in a huge bag. I, I got the, the uh, soft case version, not the hard case, because it's just meant to be in here. I don't even really need the case. It stays set up like this all the time, pretty much just sort of over there out of sight where you can't normally see it. And the power supply that I use is the True Tone CS12 Pro. It's got loads of more power than I would ever need for this kind of thing and it's it's been reliable and, and most importantly noise free like it's so so quiet I've had a few other power supplies in the past that have actually cost quite a bit of money but in comparison this is this is amazing so I would highly recommend that so it begins with a tuner pedal I'm using the Boss TU2 this has seen a million gigs and has just been just built like a complete tank it's scratched up it's been dropped from all kinds of heights probably run over at some point and it's still going i've had it since 2003 and it's just been amazing next to it we've got the freak out by digitech this is just a pedal for fun i actually what i really wanted is i'm a big fan of sustainiax and sustainers and i was really hoping that it would replace um a sustainer so i could use other guitars and not have to chop them up to put an expensive sustainiac in but unfortunately it does it's, it's not quite the same and it, at the moment it's not actually plugged into anything it's just placed there so we can ignore that for now so from the tuner pedal we go into the crybaby it's just the standard crybaby i literally bought it just for youtube demos and i don't think i've even used it yet so but i know that it'll come there'll come a point where it'll be required and it's better to have it there and not need it than to need it and not have it so from the while we go into the Digitech Whammy DT, again this is a pedal I haven't used yet in any uh, YouTube videos. I bought it at the start of lockdown and with the intention of putting it on my live board to make silly noises with and whatever. But unfortunately we know what happened and it kind of just made its way onto this board because it just looked really cool. So it's kind of been a bit of a placeholder, uh, I should probably take it off at some point soon but for now just it just adds to the coolness and yeah I should probably get rid of it. So from the Digitech Whammy, we go to the first of many gain stages. So the first one is the Boss SD1. I bought this at the same time as the tuner, and I literally bought it because I heard Richie Sambora used one. So it stayed with me ever since, and it's got the battle scars to prove it. I like to use this as a boost into another gain pedal or into the overdrive channel of my amp to tighten up the front end, volume all the way up, gain all the way down, and tone to taste, usually somewhere in the middle. And I actually do exactly the same thing with the Ivan S Tube Screamer. Um, this is the TS Mini. Uh, I, I bought this again for YouTube demos because I think it's expected that everybody has a, a some form of a Tube Screamer. So I went with this one to save a bit of space. So it does exactly the same thing. It's just a slightly different flavor. I think I kind of prefer the SD one, but it's nice to have an alternative, alternate kind of uh, sound. So this one might be such an obvious change in sound, but it's the Diesel Channel 3 behind me with no boost. Then I'll play the same thing again with the TS1, uh, TS Mini, sorry, and then the next one with the SD1. So without a boost, it sounds like this. <laughs> So from the Tube Screamer, we go into the Bad Horse, which is by Tone City. That's their Clon clone. And I think, again, everybody's kind of expected to have some form of a clon for YouTube demos. Um, this is what I chose. It's a small form factor, not very expensive. The whole point of this pedal board was to not have 
sort of really expensive pedals on it to show something a bit more realistic. So that's the one that I, go, that I went with. That goes into the Nobleman by Tone City, which is a clone of a Nobleman. I really like this pedal, especially with like a telly or something like that. I think that an actual ODR one is probably more on the affordable side. So at some point I will change this out for an actual ODR one. But for now, this is, this is what I use and I really like it. And the Bad Horse sounds like this. This is the Nobleman. So that's my overdrive section, those four pedals, basically four different flavors of overdrive. They go into the first of two distortion pedals, which is the TODP by Brelia Amps. Brelia Amps are a uh, UK based boutique amp builder. They make unbelievable stuff. They make like 5,000 pound amps and really, really mad quality. But, but they also make these pedals which have a valve in or tube and have like a million different settings via the dip switches you can do so much with this pedal uh, i'm going to do a dedicated video of this probably coming out in the next few days or weeks uh, these are about i think they're under 250 pounds around that kind of mark <laughs> They're unique, you know nobody else is going to have this pedal and they sound amazing. I'm using this for like a just really over the top kind of broken amp distortion sound at the moment because I wanted it to do something that the second distortion pedal doesn't do. So that's what this is for now. And speaking of the second distortion pedal, the second one is the Bad 94 by, well, Perfecto. Uh, Perfecto de Castro. This is his signature distortion pedal. I think it's based on a Marshall Shredmaster, and it sounds so good for that kind of tight 80s uh, rock and metal. I love the sound of it for rhythm and then boosting it with like a Tube Screamer or the o o D um, SD1. Sounds so good. Bit of delay chorus right back in the 80s. So the Perfecto pedal. <laughs> and put a Tube Screamer on. Bit of delay. Chorus. So then we get to my wobbly pedal because everybody needs a wobbly pedal and the wobbly pedal that I choose is a chorus because I'm a big fan of chorus. Uh, I did have the Angel Wing by Tone City, which was like a £40 uh, a chorus pedal. That died after a couple of months, uh, which was a real shame because I really liked it. I think it was a clone of a Boss C something, CH1 maybe. But uh, So I put this in place as a temporary kind of placeholder because Joyo sent it out to me. Uh, it's the Narcissus by uh, Joyo, Joyo. But it turns out uh, I've really grown to like this pedal. So for now, this is staying on my board. And this is my chorus pedal for YouTube demos anyway. And then for delay, we get to another pedal, which I bought just for YouTube demos because uh, analog style delay um, MXR carbon copy is quite sort of industry standard, isn't it? So... If people want to hear something with delay, it's likely they've got something kind of similar. So I thought that would be the one to go for. I was always more of a fan of digital delay, but I think over the past couple of years, I've definitely grown to appreciate the sound of analog delay a bit more. So I really like this pedal. It's cool.
And lastly on the board here is a, um, obviously not plugged into anything, is a Sky, a Sky Surfer by TC Electronic, which is a uh, reverb pedal. And it's a fine pedal, there's nothing wrong with it really. Uh, the only reason I've not got it on the board or wired in the board at the moment is because I've just wired this into it and this takes priority over this at the moment. But... Yeah, I just need to get a couple of patch leads together and that'll be wired in as well. And this pedal here is the Air Step by Exonic and that controls all the channel switching on my amps behind me. Before this, I used to use the MIDI Moose by Tech 21 and that was really good, really reliable, really roadworthy, but really big. This takes up a lot less space. So for now, this is the MIDI switcher that I'm using. The only other pedal that you can't see normally is this pedal here, which is is the Mua repeater. And what I like about it, it's a delay pedal, it's a digital delay pedal. And what I like about this is it's got a kill dry function, which means that only the affected signal will go through, which is perfect for if you've got an amp with a parallel effects loop, so you can just blend in the wet signal. And that's what I do. I've got two loops on the amp behind me. There's a series loop and a parallel loop. I like to use the parallel loop with just, um, I just blend a little bit of delay in when I need it and you get a very minimal kind of tone loss that way. So as you can see, it's quite a lot of pedals for a single board. And the question that I have for you is I've recently been looking into different switching systems. So at the moment, I'm thinking of going with the uh, Gig Rig Quartermaster 10, this is the QM10, which has got 10 different loops. But I'd also like to know if you have any kind of preferences, if you've got anything that you'd recommend, any kind of switching systems, because the Gig Rig one, I know it's built really well, but it's also really expensive. So if you know something a bit cheaper, I know that Joyo make one and Harley Benton make one. If you know another one that's really good, um, otherwise it's probably looking like I'm going to go with the gig rig but um, please let me know down below if you've got any suggestions so that's my YouTube pedal boards but I do want to quickly note that this pedal here the TODP it doesn't have to sound like that I deliberately make it sound like that kind of broken amp ready to explode kind of sound because I think it sounds really cool and this does it really well but this does so much so it covers so much ground it's got these dip switches you can make it sound exactly how you want to uh, make it sound so don't judge this pedal on that one sound that I just played you just to be clear I'll be making a dedicated video for this pedal and I think you'll really like it so please let me know down in the comments what switching system you would recommend uh, please do subscribe as well because that's a massive help and this is the best guitar in the world it's a p1 it's based on the p1 by LT Custom Guitars I'll put a link in the description below thank you so much for watching I'll see you around